So imagine this. What you eat, how well you sleep, how far you run, even what you're thinking about, all measured, tracked and recorded. Sounds like Big Brother. Except the monitor is you. That's what an ever-growing group of people called self-quantifiers are doing, using mobile technology like their cell phones to track various parts of their existence to improve it. So, is this global movement obsessive or could it be healthy? Erin Conroy with Auckland's very own self-quantifiers. So run me through what you're tracking now. Okay, so first of all, sleep, how many Ks I'm running, uh, what I'm eating, keystrokes per minute, body language, my brainwaves, my ability to focus. I think that's most of it. Wow. This is Jay. The reason for the ice is that it helps cool down, cool down the muscles and helps aid your muscle recovery and also uh, wakes you to heck up. Just like some elite athletes, he likes an ice-cold shower. He says it kickstarts his working day. It generally keeps me going till about sort of two o'clock as far as feeling nice and energetic. Jay is a self-quantifier. He keeps track of how good he feels, how well he sleeps. Last night was actually quite a good night's sleep for me. And I got six full cycles of sleep, which is really, really cool. He tracks what he eats, how he thinks, recording and using the information to maximise his sense of well-being and personal performance. And Jay is not alone. One recent overseas study suggests nearly two-thirds of people track their diet, weight or exercise in some way. And if you're into gadgets or apps, there are thousands of tracking tools to choose from. Thing full of water, All right? I'm a little bit <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a global phenomenon with the most dedicated self-quantifiers meeting up to share their experiences and ideas. So uh, I cut up coffee. I've been Whoa. doing that for about four weeks now. This branch in Auckland was set up by Camille. I was pretty tired before, yeah, but now I'm really sort of feeling a lot more stable. Interesting. <laughs> the key to being a self-quantifier is just being curious. So keep your hips a little bit lower. Seven, four, take your time. It's not a race, that's it, just get it done. Get your elbows up. Three, good. So, how many calories do you think I've burnt so far? Just then, probably about 300 calories. That's a good meal in a bit. My current goals are generally around health and fitness, so I'm working towards achieving a sort of optimal body fat percentage for my height, weight and age, uh, and just tracking my exercise. Camille enters her exercise into an app. So I'll put in 30 minutes of circuit. Which she also uses to record her food, following a plan set out by her nutritionist. So I've been using my fitness pal to just keep track of what I'm eating and seeing how well I'm sticking to this food plan. Camille says she's not a calorie counter, but having a daily allowance is a useful guide. So I'm just gonna enter in my dinner. Um, so the chicken breast. I try every day. So for that dinner, that was 350 calories. Gingerbread. <laughs> and even when she's out, Camille can keep track of her calories by scanning barcodes with her smartphone. 116 calories. So you would have to walk for about 40 minutes to burn that off. Wowzers. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> mm. Those calories taste so good. <laughs> so how much time would you spend each day checking or using your apps? I would probably spend as much time um, using these apps and tools as I do people checking their Facebook or people scrolling through Instagram. So what do you say to people who think self-quantifying is self-obsessive? I can see how they think that. The reason I use these apps is not just to track things about myself, but to be able to share the data that I'm tracking so that people can use this information to, to achieve their own goals. Self-quantifiers form a community where people can support and motivate each other. So it looks like Jay's been doing some walking. Have to encourage him to come to a, a class with me. <laughs> the application I use is Map My Run. It's just a GPS tracker which shows how many kilometres I've done, my elevation, and how many calories I've consumed. 
While Camille's goals are personal, Jay applies self-quantifying to his professional life. I run my, my music as I run as well, uh, because that keeps me uh, kind of energised or or more relaxed depending on, on what I'm trying to achieve for the day. If it's sales tasks or, or going to get through a lot of email, then it, it'll be a high, high intensity music, something like uh, Eminem or something like that. Jay runs his online company from home with help from his wife, Hilary. Do you self quantify? No, I don't, but I think it's really interesting living with Jay to see him do all the funny things that he does. So you're still learning things about him? Yeah, fully. Yeah. <laughs> It was in his first job selling menswear that Jay's self-tracking began using a simple diary. In the diary it's got the shirt I wore, the pants I wore, my opening, and then you can see, well, if I use, hey, how are you doing, I'll do 25% more than if I said, hello, how are you today? These days, Jay self-tracks on a whole new level. Um, I've bought this, um, this is a... Uh, Neurosky, so this is just basically a consumer level um, EEG machine. He uses it to help him see if he's in the right mood for the task at hand. This shows what my brain waves are doing um, as I'm working. And the types of thoughts that I'm having, um, whether I'm relaxed or alert, these things show right now that I'm paying a lot of attention. Jay's goal is to maximise his productivity. The new thing that I've been playing around with is um, oxygen supplementation. So I can I can just pop that in my nose while I'm while I'm selling or whatever. Um, and you've, you've basically got a little unit like this, which um, you drop some chemicals in and that produces oxygen. Um, I'd have to say, doing it, it does feel like I'm more alert. So when it comes to the oxygen and the ice showers... You think that's weird, don't you? Well, what if it is just a placebo effect? If you only think it's helping you? Sure. Um, might be. What's wrong with that? It, it seems to work for me. Have you considered that taking extra oxygen might actually be bad for you? Yep, definitely. For anything that I do, I look, I read a lot up about it but before we start. It's very important to include doctors to see what helps and doesn't help. I think there is a risk at the moment that we are going to be driven by the devices and the tools that are available to us and track the things that are easy to measure rather than necessarily the things that are actually important to measure. Duncan Babbage is a psychologist who says you need to choose your tracking tools carefully. One of the things that you're going to be thinking about is, is the information that it's giving me accurate? Does it seem like the things that I'm being told here uh, resonate with other things that I've been told in the past by people who are sensible and, you know, by health professionals when they're health issues? When it comes to information, Jay likes to give as much as he gets, providing each client with proof of his billable time. Uh, I also use a time logger and the, the camera here takes random pictures of me every 10 minutes uh, and takes a screenshot of, of what it is I'm working on. Um, I find it good because it keeps you honest. As you're working, if you get distracted by things, you're like, no, I'm working for this client at this time, for this moment. I don't know too many people that do web designs or, or, or SEO audits and are measuring themselves to this sort of a level. Um, it does seem a little bit weird, but it's kind of cool to me because it just means that I've got more information and more data as to how I'm working. So how is this information useful? If the client gives me really good feedback, then I can go back through the entire day, see was it because I had a good night's sleep? Was it because I was in a, in a good emotional state? Had I, was the meditation that I've started doing the actual critical thing that's helping? Could you be trying to do too much? So I don't do this stuff every day, every week. I will go for three days intensive on a particular thing to work out what's wrong with my day. As an example, I know if I run for two hours on a, on a work day, I can achieve more in six hours than I can in eight. That's an interesting finding, and I can quantify that. I think that's the key thing with something like self-tracking, that it should be about what are the ultimate goals that I'm pursuing rather than the tracking itself. It's a little bit like when you're driving a car, becoming overly focused on the controls of the vehicle, and it needs to become more about the journey. Everything in moderation is a, a good thing to be thinking about as well.
Back at the meter, the more high-tech brainwave scanner is on show, and Jay is just a little bit excited. That is so cool. That's what your face is doing, so that's not the... The brain. Sometimes self-quantifying is about more than just the numbers. It's about having fun. <laughs> Not gonna pout. <laughs> Lose deal. <laughs> I even got the eyebrow. <laughs> That's awesome. I find it way stranger that someone likes Kim Kardashian than someone liking neuroscience. Or, or cool, funky, you know, like, w what's wrong with being a nerd and being a bit geeky? So geeks are the new cool? Yes, very much so. Have, did, you not hear, did you not get that memo? <laughs> <laughs> so, healthy or obsessive, that is the question tonight. Let us know what you think. Now, an update on Cam Luxton.